Hey, hey, hello everyone. Um, Fluffy Armchair Admiral here, uh, back with some more Train Driver 2. Um, last episode happened to be very, very successful. Uh, it's a multiplayer train driving simulator uh, created by uh, on-rail um, team, uh, a team or group of um, programmers and rail fans from Poland. And basically it revolves around like a simulation uh, where you can jump into to some engines produced and, and uh, in many cases, uh, well, in all cases, in fact, uh, used on Polish rails uh, starting from uh, early 60s uh, up until this moment. Uh, in fact, many of those units uh, are in fact still uh, riding on, on Polish rails. And today we are going to look on one of them in particular. It's a very, very old, um, produced uh, since uh, 1962. I think the produ uh, production finished in 1993 or 1994. Uh, it's a multiple electric unit or uh, something like that. Yeah, um, let me just... Uh, electrical multiple units. Oh, there, there we go. Uh, so it's EMU uh, called EN57. Yes, uh, that's the one. Uh, so today I'm going to, to take uh, a short route, uh, obviously on multiplayer session, uh, using one of those bad boys. And I'm going to tell you a few words about it. Uh, I'm going to guide you through what I'm doing in that session. So uh, here we are in our cabin. I just started my session. I just joined in. Uh, so obviously uh, I'm mostly focusing on, on the chat. I'm trying to uh, give analysis of my train to uh, to the dispatcher so he can set up my, um, well, uh, my timetable. Because as you can see, timetable is currently blank. Uh, that's what you get when you start a new game or when you basically join a server. Uh, you just jump into your locomotive whether you select a cold start for some units it is available uh, for this particular unit uh, which is en57 it is not available you can only start it when the engine is already running uh, but you still have to set some switches inside the cabin uh, so i'm currently writing uh, analysis of my train uh, obviously well my luck uh, dispatcher just went afk <laughs> uh, so i'm writing all that uh, just for nothing because i will have to rewrite it in just a minute anyway uh just give me a second because i'm i'm still thinking yeah there we go right so now it's time for me to set up this locomotive i'm turning on cab light uh, left uh right and what am I turning? Oh my goodness me. Yeah, uh, I turned on right uh, light at the front. Uh, only right light because I'm on the siding. I will be maneuvering into the platform. Uh, so for maneuvers, you turn on only uh, the light on the side of the cabin, uh, both on the front and at the back of the train. So that's why I just jumped into the back cabin to turn on the left uh, white light to indicate that the train is about to be maneuvering. Yeah, I just received a message from uh, other driver uh, letting me know that uh, dispatcher is AFK, which I've noticed uh, when I was sending a message anyway. Right, so I turned on uh, left light, uh, which was exactly this switch. <laughs> yeah, there, there is a lot of them. Uh, anyway, uh, we'll be back uh, to that soon. I'm still trying to read through the labels. Uh, thankfully, I do understand Polish pretty well. Uh, yeah, those are, for example, red lights. Uh, you can turn them separately or you can turn them all together. So I turned on left. Yeah, I, I was still thinking what, what am I supposed to turn? But eventually I ended up turning uh, the right one, uh, which is white light. Uh, right. Uh, on top of that, I turned on uh, like a heating to the cabin, heating to the passenger cabins and all that stuff. There are other trains passing by. Uh, so, yeah, there's quite a lot of happening. Right, uh, I'm now messing 
with my brakes. I'm trying to uh, release the brakes and, and get myself ready to eventually maneuver into the platform. Uh, that switch that I just used uh, was for uh, air compressor. I forced it to turn on and uh, and pump some air into into um, the pipe. Uh, so now that that the compressor has turned off, I know that uh, the pressure pipe is full of air. Right. So uh, the dispatcher just uh, messaged that he is back. Uh, so I'm reading through the messages, but eventually I will be asked to give my analysis. Um, let's just give him a second. Probably I will write my analysis right now. Yeah, other trains are also reporting, so there are a couple other players. I'm still held at uh, at red light or blue light in this case because maneuvering light, uh, maneuver or siding lights are blue and white. Uh, right. Uh, just give him a second. I'm trying to establish. Yeah, I'm being asked about my uh, analysis, so I'm repeating basically what I wrote before. Uh, so, model of a train, maximum speed, which I messed up a little bit because it was supposed to be 110 kilometers per hour. Uh, length of the train, weight of a train, and type of a train that I'm running. Even though. Uh, Anyone who, who plays this game knows EN57 is only a passenger service. <laughs> right, uh, so uh, soon I will receive uh, a light uh, letting me into the platform, uh, but right now I need to wait for a dispatcher to actually start doing something. In the meantime, uh, I'm giving him a thumbs up uh, for his job. Uh, so far, um, he wasn't causing any any issues uh, there were no issues on the tracks uh, on on his station so yeah why not i can always change my decision if something bad happens but well um, i i hope that everyone is trying to play the game as it is supposed to be played which is full immersion and and realism right so uh, i received a a positive light from a dispatcher which i didn't notice at the start I was still wondering, okay, I, I don't have my timetable yet, uh, should I start or not? Uh, but eventually I soon will be asked to uh, to get into the platform. Uh, I think the message should arrive soon. Yep, uh, exactly, I just got a message from a dispatcher to go to the platform, so I'm releasing my brakes. And now I'm messing with the chat, uh, I don't know when. Oh yeah, uh, I accidentally wrote a plus symbol oh now now i press uh, the fuse button right finally i managed to <laughs> to get my controls to work uh, because when you are on the chat some of the controls that you are using are on well pretty much every controls uh, are on the keyboard so when you are trying to use the controls you are starting to type things so you need to make sure that you unclick the chat before you start operating your train uh, right, so I'm now pulling into the platform. Uh, I'm trying to keep the speed below 25 km per hour. There is no need for me to rush. I still don't have my timetable. I, I'm not sure when am I supposed to start my service. But it will definitely happen soon. So you can basically hear how loud or how silent this locomotive is. Uh, it's very interesting engine and I will showcase it when we pull into the platform. I will tell you a few more words about it. Right, so that's my new timetable. I'm starting at the station of Otvotsko, uh, which I'm pulling in now. And my uh, designated start time is 3.36. You can probably see that, well, that's pretty long time. That's over an hour of waiting. Well, it is not. Uh, and I will explain that right now. Uh, the game is taking time from your local PC and I'm obviously living in the UK, uh, which means that at the time of recording this video it was 2.26 p.m. Unfortunately, uh, the game and the game servers are located in Poland, which is one hour ahead. So for a dispatcher, it is 327 at the moment which is exactly <laughs> 10 minutes before uh, well which is 
basically 10 minutes before I'm about to depart. Uh, obviously he is unaware uh, of, of the fact that, uh, that I'm having a different display time, uh, but thankfully I was aware of, of that difference. That's why uh, what you will see in my timetable and actual time, uh, well, you need to take that into consideration the fact that I'm in different time zone from, from the timetable. So I'm actually following it pretty, pretty well. Right, obviously it's an end station, uh, so I was forced to change my cabin. I turned off anything that I had to turn in in the previous cabin. I turned on a uh, red light at the end of the train, and then when I jumped into to this cabin that, that I'm just setting myself up, I turned on everything that I was supposed to, which is three lights at the front, uh, three white lights at the front, in fact. Uh, I also turned on the heating, and now I opened the door on my right side. Uh, basically, I wasn't sure which doors I was supposed to open, because uh, I got platforms on both sides, so technically I could open both of them. Uh, but yeah, I was struggling with that decision. It was like, hmm, should I open these ones or these ones? Because like my timetable doesn't indicate which platform I'm actually pulling into or which uh, which track on which platform I'm supposed to service, um, which is something that might be improved uh, in the game, especially for this type of platforms. Anyway, I jumped off the train and that's how this um, electric multiple unit looks like. It is very old construction, it was designed uh, during the times when Poland was a socialistic country or it was under control of, of uh, socialists and, and USSR. So obviously uh, resources were kind of sparse and like the biggest success of this unit is that it was built locally. So it was built in Poland fully from a Polish part. Uh, that was basically a Polish construction. It was uh, based on the uh, first electric multiple unit, uh, EW55, if I remember correctly. Uh, and there were, I think, 1410 or 1411 units built throughout the span of 32 or 33 years uh, last unit was produced in 1993 and then the project was discontinued out of those 1400 units about 300 i think are still in use on polish rails by various different uh, rail companies so it is a very successful unit in fact it is still in service even though first of them was built over 60 years ago is it yeah we pretty much 60 years ago uh so well over uh, it was almost 60 years ago uh, it was nine uh, 1961 when they were uh, designed and 1962 when they were produced yeah exactly so two years from from now and and the oldest unit that eventually might be on on polish rails if they are still in service, obviously, or if they will be still in service, will be 60 years old. Uh, but it doesn't change the fact that those were really good engines. Um, how they are built is, is well, very interesting. I'm, I don't have any comparison from, uh, from the Western units. I, I've never analyzed them. Uh, but basically, the engine unit is in the middle of the train. So... Uh, the train has three compartments. Uh, the first compartment, uh, which consists of one cabin, uh, two passenger compartments, and one uh, like a not cargo. It's it's luggage compartment. Um, is is obviously a, a wagon. It's it's just being pushed. Uh, it contains uh, air compressor, if I remember correctly. Uh, the middle unit contains four engines uh, 145 kilowatts each if I remember correctly uh, those were well not the most efficient engines I'm not gonna lie uh, it is very power hungry unit and, and that's probably why um, its lifespan is coming to an end because more modern units 
are definitely much more uh, efficient in terms of electric consumption. Um, well, that's what you get for, for very old constructions. They, they are full of imperfections. Anyway, um, so that's pretty much middle compartment. It also contains three uh, passenger compartments. And then you got a uh, back uh, or rear wagon. It is being also pulled. Uh, so it has no no propulsion on its own. Uh, the propulsions, the propulsion, uh, propulsion uh, blah, 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 is only in the middle of the train. So uh, last wagon again contains two passenger compartments, one luggage compartment and obviously a cabin for a driver. So the train doesn't have to like uh, doesn't have to turn around yeah you just have to switch the cabin as, as pretty much every single multiple unit does and uh, they are very very flexible in that regard uh, so that's how it's built and I think uh, the rear uh, wagon contains batteries instead of compressors so uh, that's how it works uh, and batteries are being used to, to eventually uh, power the train while uh, while it's being cold, uh, so while main engines are turned off, while pantograph is being uh, lowered, you can always turn on the battery to turn on the compressor, and then raise the pantograph to to get power and power up the uh, the batteries uh, back again. Uh, so that's that's how it was designed. Obviously, if if the batteries are faulty, then the train is basically useless uh, because you are not able to power up the compressor that will be needed in order to give enough uh, like a pressure to raise the pantograph because they are all uh, pneumatic right so uh, it's about time for me to to leave this station uh, there's less than two minutes uh, until departure uh, so I'm getting ready inside the cabin getting cozy uh, as you can see this construction is very very old uh, and I think the number of this unit uh, that is recreated in the game is 001 so it's basically the first unit ever built or at least it is supposed to be reconstruction of, of this unit uh, so everything you, you see is based on, on some photos that uh, people that designed this particular engine managed to gather right uh, obviously in the meantime uh, there were uh, some issues on the tracks uh, unfortunately that was the first failure from dispatcher he gave the right signals to, to one other train unfortunately uh, he failed to set proper junctions <laughs> uh, so they had some uh, some uh, small failure on the tracks anyway uh, right now it's 30 seconds until uh, my departure so I report that I'm basically getting ready uh, so I pre-wrote the message and I'm about to send it as soon as the clock hits uh, 2.36 which would be my departure time uh, just give it a second uh, obviously I'm, I'm recording voiceover um, after I'm, I was playing so, so the video well sometimes I will need to uh, wait for the video to catch up to, to my thoughts because obviously I've seen that video before I, I was recording it anyway uh, I used the buzzer to, to inform the passengers that we are about to close the doors and I close the doors uh, I'm releasing the brake pressure uh, by pulling the lever uh, further to, to up uh, from driving position to force the air out of the system and now I'm waiting for the signal in front of me there is a semaphore as you can see it is showing red light I can't remember what I turned on oh yes I swapped my pantographs because I realized that um, I had only front pantograph raised because I was switching sides of the train so obviously uh, in Poland it is very common to drive uh, while having rear pantograph raised because it's much more efficient uh, apparently right so I'm waiting for free path and as soon as the light turns uh, green or uh, will display other signal than S1 which they are displaying right now I will set off to my next destination 
And my next station is uh, pretty close. It's about a minute away from, from this one. It's called Świderek. And I will be stopping there for about a minute. Right, so my signal has been updated. So it's time for me to set off. Uh, obviously, when passenger train uh, pulls off the platform or uh, begins to roll off the platform, you don't give a sound signal, uh, which is completely opposite to, to the situation when you are being held at the signal on route, uh, when, when you are starting uh, somewhere on, on the main line or wherever you are being held on, on, on the light. If you are not at the platform, you always have to give a sound signal before departure for safety reasons. Right. Uh, so I'm now heading on, uh, hoping that, uh, that the junctions for my train were set correctly, <laughs> uh, based on based on previous failure from uh, from that dispatcher. Uh, it was well, it could end up being a major mistake. But thankfully, uh, not all the lights on that uh, wrong route were set, so dispatcher could actually see that uh, some or one of the trains passed a red light because obviously engineer wasn't able to, to stop it on, on time and as soon as you pass the red light um, everyone on, on this uh, scenery gets information that someone has did that so uh, then you can use an uh, emergency system called radio stop and give a radio signal to every single train on this scenery to actually put emergency brakes on and it will be done automatically independently from uh, from engineers so uh, that's one of the ways you can prevent an accident if you see dangerous situation you can take on charge you can use radio stop and stop trains from crashing into each other uh, obviously you have to use it wisely because misuse of, uh, of this device will get you kicked uh, so that's uh, that's good attempt, uh, well that's good point to, to be added uh, as you can see uh, I didn't even manage to, to get to a full speed I, I haven't reached 50 kilometers per hour and I'm about to stop because we've reached our first destination which is Świderek. Uh, the next two stops uh, that are indicated on on my timetable are basically uh, technical stops they are not going to be uh, at any platform. Uh, I will be held at the signals there. Uh, those are mostly junctions and, and sidings. Um, my next stop is Gdańsk Główny, which is end of my route. And that is about 27 minutes away from, uh, from where we are right now. So anyway, uh, I pulled into the platform. I stopped. I opened the door. Uh, in the meantime, I'm preparing my brakes for departure and I decided to wait until uh, 2.41, even though I'm slightly delayed, to give passengers time to board and uh, disembark the train. Uh, so in just a second, I will be going through departure procedure, uh, which includes giving a buzzer to uh, to the passengers to inform them that the doors are about to close then I will close the door and wait a couple of seconds and listen to the doors closing when the doors are closed I, I still wait a couple of seconds and then I just depart and that's all I have to do uh, I'm not sure what is the correct procedure uh, but from what I remember, it's not as strict as it is in the UK, where some trains are waiting for, uh, I think, 30 seconds or a minute before they depart after closing the doors, uh, which is basically a safety measure just in case somebody decides, oh, yeah, I boarded the wrong train, I, I want to jump off. Um, so to prevent injuries to, to such passengers, probably that's why they, they are holding on. Um, that's also a good time to, to get notified uh, by passengers that, well, you know, those doors are supposed to close and, and they are not. <laughs> uh, because failures happen. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I don't think we uh, it was used on, on Polish rails or it might be in the procedures, but 
I rarely encountered that in practice when I was traveling to Poland by train. Anyway, we are on the main route and yeah, I'm being right now scared by those buzzers. <laughs> uh, it's very easy to, to miss uh, those uh, like uh, attention checkers or uh, how they are called. Um, yeah, I, I think they are called SHP and I and, uh, can't remember the proper naming of, of those. Uh, but yeah, uh, eventually if you forget about one of those red lights that will be flashing on, on my board uh, from time to time, uh, then you get a loud buzz. And uh, as I was playing this game, I had my uh, headphones on <laughs> and this buzzer made me jump out of my chair a few times. So uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, you won't hear that in the video that loud because I will adjust the volumes. Uh, but definitely there were a few moments where when that buzzer came out at the wrong time because I was busy uh, messing up with other levers and, and switches on the board and then the buzzer came out and I was like Ugh. I didn't notice that light yeah uh, <laughs> uh, so that's uh, that's basically my story from uh, from from this ride uh, it goes pretty uneventful until until the next uh, scenery we are right right now approaching this scenery I just basically connected to it I said hello and first message that uh, that was displayed by a dispatcher from from this new scenery is that there is no passage <laughs> uh, so as you can see on my little helper uh, there is a display that says that that I'm approaching a speed limit of zero kilometers per hour, which means that I'm approaching red light and it's coming in fast. Uh, yes, it's coming in fast because I'm going to be held at red light very, very soon. Uh, I'm not going to say that it was the most enjoyable time of all uh, because I was just sitting in one place waiting for the light to change. However, reading the chat was pretty, pretty funny. As it turns out, uh, the reason for this red light was that, well, obviously the track was being blocked. And it was being blocked by uh, one of the engineers who was struggling to turn his train on and make it moving. Uh, apparently, he might probably have uh, engaged emergency brakes and they are not that easy to release <laughs> it's not as straightforward as releasing normal brakes uh, because sometimes it requires you to, to use that um, buzzer button sometimes it requires you to, to mess up with onboard radio uh, which, which is not that intuitive uh, I've read a couple of instructions how to recover from emergency braking or from radio stop uh, but it's not as easy and I believe that it might be the thing with this driver uh, he might have messed up uh, turned on emergency braking and he wasn't able to release the pressure from the brake pipes uh, in order to, to eventually release his train so now I'm stopped at the red light and I will skip all that uh, all that interesting conversation because it took almost 10 minutes uh, so as you can see my time has been updated it is now 2 49 p.m and i'm about to receive a green light well green uh, it wasn't a green light i think i received uh, can't remember the name of the signal because they they are numbered from s1 to s13a uh, which basically makes quite a lot of combinations if you uh, if you ask me uh, but the signal that I will receive will limit my top speed to 60 kilometers per hour, uh, which is a green light on top of a orange light, uh, which also has a yellow bar underneath. So I'm unbreaking my train. Uh, I gave a sound signal and I'm departing. Uh, so now you can have a good look at the signal. Uh, when you see that on rails, uh, then you know that you have to pass this signal with a speed of 60 km per hour and you shall continue with a speed of 60 km per hour. The signal also informs you that the next signal 
will allow you to carry on with the full track speed. Right, so now I will be changing my track. Uh, I'm not going to continue on this one. I will be sent into track number three. Uh, at that point, I wasn't sure about the correct procedure because when you are being sent on a different track, you are supposed to switch your left front light from white to red to indicate that you are not moving on the right track. Uh, and as you can see, uh, I'm now passing a train that was basically on the same track as me. Well, not exactly, because there's a junction right in between us and, and light signals. Uh, but I wouldn't be able to continue if I would go up front. And if I would just pass uh, the red signal that I, uh, I was being held on, I would probably go on a head-to-head -head collision with that train. So if, if the driver or engineer of that train uh, is not aware that that I'm not about to stop uh, then probably it would end up in a crash if he is aware uh, he would be able to engage radio stop which would engage the brakes on my train uh, which is another uh, safety uh, equipment that those trains come by pretty much every train that you will encounter in this game has this system uh, so have no fear if you mess something up really bad uh, somebody including this uh, dispatcher or dispatcher uh, can eventually engage radio stop and force your train to, to full stop and you won't be able to move that easy it's not as easy as just releasing the brakes and applying uh, throttle again and probably by that time you, you're gonna release all those brakes uh, you're gonna get kicked <laughs> or at least told off Right, uh, we can now carry on with a full speed of, of 100 km per hour. Uh, the rest of, of this scenery comes pretty, pretty easy. Uh, I just continue on, on this track until I reach the next red light, which is 4 km away from me. Uh, soon I will basically uh, realize that I wasn't supposed to actually turn on that red light because the track that I'm on is a single track and it's departing from the main line. Uh, so that's the point where I started to change the switches on my main board to correct my lights. So I turned off the red light and I re-engaged the left white light uh, to indicate that I'm indeed on the right track. Because if you are on single track then every track is the right track isn't it <laughs> as long as there is no other train moving on the same track anyway uh, that's the point where i was just enjoying the scenery and basically the beauty of this game it, it might not have the best graphics ever i'm not gonna lie uh, it's unity engine it's being made by well a team of, uh, of like uh, passionate so they are definitely putting a lot of effort into all those models. You can basically see how well things are modeled, regardless of uh, of the old engine. So it's very, very impressive job. Uh, another train, uh, another well, train, another thing that is worth noting is sound. Everything is recorded uh, from various perspectives by, by people that are passionate or by people that are actually driving trains in Poland so they they often drive with some sort of cameras right now it's it's very popular pretty much everyone has a camera you either have it in your smartphone or you have a professional camera and you do some sort of YouTube videos and there are a few uh, engineers from Poland, actual engineers that are driving passenger trains, cargo trains and other trains for various companies. And they are doing like a, uh, videos from their rides. And so you can, they basically um, give a tips or give their own impressions of various things. But they also record a great sound, so they have best access locomotives so that's how things are being gathered uh, for, for this game that's why uh, models are not being released that often as, as you would like them to be uh, but there are not that many models that are missing uh, anyway 
uh, there's just a few models that uh, that needs to be done uh, same goes to textures they are based on actual photos so there are people that are taking those photos then uh, graphics are, are turning them into into actual textures and that's how the model gets to life uh, I think on the uh, on the games forum uh, there is also a topic uh, where you can gain some information how you could join the project for example and and give your own input into it uh, as a graphics uh, programmer uh, as a modeler you can basically create other uh, your own models uh, you can also start uh, built in uh, into the game editor and you can build your own scenery and you can host it it will still be added to the server people will be able to download it as they join it and it will be playable uh, but if it's not meeting uh, specific requirements and if you don't reach uh, like an uh, agreement with uh, with the team it won't make up into the game as um, as part of the base game that, that you can download uh, obviously anyone even on on those uh, free play accounts can can use any scenery that that is available in the game and any scenery that is custom made by users and that's that's the beauty of this game uh, honestly uh, as i mentioned in the previous video you can always drive on the various different tracks uh, because it all depends on what sceneries are being hosted at the moment and obviously in order to host a scenery you have to be a dispatcher and so that's that's part of the game anyway let's get back to the route uh we have i think yeah uh we are about to leave this scenery and we are about to enter Gdańsk scenery uh, which should be loaded just up ahead I can't remember exact mo uh, moment uh, but we are getting very very close to the end of our destination uh, I'm now traveling at uh, at speed of 90 kilometers per hour and yeah I've sent the last message to, to the dispatcher uh, with a plus that means that i'm giving him a thumbs up obviously i've been scared uh, by this uh, terrible buzzer <laughs> again uh, because while i was busy typing and, and giving thumbs up uh, obviously the bloody thing has to <laughs> come off <laughs> oh well uh, right i just passed a sign that informs me that up ahead uh, the speed limit will change to 80 kilometers per hour and obviously my helper got updated at the same time uh, saying that in in about 800 meters i will enter uh, 80 km per hour zone right uh, so i managed to, to slow down pretty quickly uh, and that's one of the good things about this train uh, which i failed to mention before the brakes are very responsible uh, responsive i have to admit that at first I was very confused uh, because when you are traveling like uh, at 100 kilometers per hour you can notice that it feels pretty fast in this game but this train can actually stop in no time uh, that's that's one of the good things about this train and it's very very good engine or very good unit to actually start your adventure in this game with uh, because it's very very easy to drive you, you literally have to operate three levers a uh, couple of switches uh, that that you can easily translate and, and find out what they do uh, you can start this engine in, in single player and, and basically test all those switches and, and see what they do uh, but in one of the upcoming episodes i will try to eventually uh, give you a short brief of, of what those various switches will eventually do uh, i think all of them can be switched uh, not all of them permanently but they will still work uh, one way or another uh, i'm not sure what every single one of them do or does uh, because i've never tested them myself but every single one of them is properly signed which is good and if you if you zoom in the camera to on them 
uh, you basically can read the text underneath which is well in my opinion amazing attention to detail uh, i'm not going to lie uh, you can basically by just reading all those labels you can basically find out how to turn on the locomotive providing that you can speak polish or providing that you can read polish and understand some basic words related to, uh, to locomotives and steam or electric engines obviously uh, but uh, have no fear everything uh, can be explained on the forum uh, yes the game has its own forums you can also go different way and if you want to ask about any of those switches in particular uh, I might be able to translate them for you uh, if you join my discord server there is a dedicated channel to talk about train driver 2 and you can basically post your questions thoughts uh, ideas or if you are driving and recording yeah there is a section where you can basically self-promote yourself and post your own YouTube videos as well. Uh, so I'm, I'm more than happy to, to see them if, if you want to share something. Uh, obviously, if you are experimenting, I strongly recommend going into single player mode. Because even if you crash, even if you do something terribly wrong, the scenario will just end. You can restart it and experiment once more. Uh, there, there are no consequences for like completely destroying or wrecking your train in single player or crossing red light or doing something absolutely stupid uh, but if you do it in multiplayer session uh, then beware because well that has its own consequences and I mentioned that in the previous video uh, the community is pretty strict uh, here is another moment where I really really jumped out of my chair I was so focused at this station approach and keeping my speed uh, in check uh, trying to figure out where I'm going, which platform I'm, I'm trying to enter that I missed this bloody thing and again it went off and I literally jumped <laughs> at that point anyway, I'm pulling into the platform, my, my trip is about to end uh, I, I spent a good 45 minutes all, uh, at the moment uh, basically traveling, doing three stops in the middle uh, so that's how this game can go um, even though uh, even though I traveled relatively short distance it took me good 45 minutes uh, if you follow the procedures even a short route can be really fun and, and time consuming uh, which is fun thing about this game because there are many many more places to visit Obviously some of them are locked for me uh, because of my low level, uh, it's just my second run, I just finished it. Right, time to open the door and time to jump off this locomotive and have the last look at my lovely little train. Let's get back onto the platform, yeah and that's how it looks in its full glory I'd say. As you can hear, uh, you can hear the engines only in the mid part of the train. Uh, here are the red lights. Yep, last look. I'm on. Well, uh, I'm not sure which platform that is. Uh, I think it was platform 5, but I'm not sure which track. I can't see num uh, numbers of, of those tracks. Uh, I will get into more details about how... Uh, platforms are numbered in Poland because there are, there are difference uh, or significant differences between uh, platform numberation in Poland or platform marking in Poland and uh, platform marking in other countries uh, like Germany or perhaps uh, United Kingdom especially anyway uh, one last thing I decided to, to say goodbye to, to one last um, dispatcher uh, I mentioned that uh, well in that men uh, message I mentioned that uh, that I'm giving him a plus unfortunately uh, well which I realized after uh, after I left uh, I forgot to actually do it <laughs> so my apologies to whoever was a dispatcher on, on that route uh, I can't remember your name but if you are watching this video, yes, I was actually intending to give you that thumbs up. 
uh, it was nice and enjoyable route well so that's basically it uh, that was my second adventure with uh, with Train Driver 2, a second multiplayer um, adventure. It wasn't particularly long, uh, and I was mostly busy talking about other various things, and, and I wasn't too focused on, on what's happening on the rails uh, or on description on of what's happening on the rails. Uh, but it wasn't too exciting. There was no major accidents, no major... Uh, mess ups from from various other people uh, it was pretty pretty calm route uh, and hopefully my next one that I will try to record in some time because those videos seems to be popular and and I love it I, I really like to to see that people are interested in in the topic and that people are interested in the game that I play uh, because I like when when people actually comment underneath the videos I like when people try to I joined this small community that I'm trying to eventually build around this channel. Right, anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching. If you liked this video, give it a massive thumbs up, uh, share it with your friends. Um, if you disliked it, well, give it a thumbs down. It, it will still help um, YouTube algorithm to, to place it slightly higher. So yeah, uh, you are still helping. Uh, maybe, maybe not by motivating me uh, exactly, but well, uh, if you add some comments uh, what was wrong with the video uh, i'm i'm really happy to to address that or eventually look into the issue um, if if there are any particular uh, elements that you don't like about the videos uh, then yeah write it in the comments down below the video as as well uh, i'm i'm not deleting those comments unless they are completely rude and offensive but uh, or if they contain any or if they contain any advertisement, then unfortunately they won't go through. Uh, but uh, if you have any con uh, constructive criticism, I'm really more than happy to, to hear that as well. Uh, if you have any, any other thoughts, yeah, uh, I strongly encourage you to write it down in the comments down below. Uh, you can also jump in on, on my Discord server. Link is again down below the video in, in its description. So you can find everything there. Uh, there is also a link to the game forums where you can find the game itself, where you can register your account and you can eventually start uh, your adventure in Train Driver 2 because the game is for free. So why not trying? Right. Have a great day and see you all later. Later. Out.